It's good at what he does, huh? The good doctor. Back to our top story now. In a verdict in the George Zimmerman trial, the jurors have spoken and say they will not speak. Will they change their minds? The names of the women on that panel, uh, they have been sealed, and reportedly they want to keep it that way, especially after numerous requests have already been filed to contact them. But the judge might overturn all of this. Judge Alex Ferrer is the host of Judge Alex, my guest here in New York, and good morning to you. Good morning. Now, a very busy two months, and I think you've been excellent on this case the entire time. Thank so you. Thank you for being of steady mind as we try to work our way through this. The jurors don't want to talk. Mm -hmm. Does I that understand. surprise you? No, not, not at all. I mean, this is a very tense situation. There's a lot of um, divisiveness in this case, and I can see why they don't want to be a target of anybody's uh, anger. And the, I, the identities of the jurors have not been revealed. That's right. Would the judge change that? Could, I, I could mean, the, the judge change it? The judge can change it because I'll, I'll tell you this. Sealing court records is, is the exception. Typically, our court records are public, and you can go in there and, and look at any court file. So the judge has to have a legitimate basis in the law to go ahead and seal court records. I think this is a great idea to seal the, the names, identity of jurors. In fact, I think the legislature should act to make that private, except, of course, for investigations, if the police need to investigate bribery you think of jurors. So, you think like, you need that? I, I think you really do, because we are now in a different age. Remember the Casey Anthony case, I couldn't think of anything worse than after the Casey Anthony verdict came in for the jurors to be hounded by the media to get them to explain why they came up with a verdict that America disagreed with. We asked jurors to do a very difficult job, and then the last thing we want is people saying, I don't want to be on the jury because I don't want to be criticized later if they don't agree with my verdict. You'll end up with jurors who just want to sell a book or give interviews for money, and you end up then with verdicts that are that are intentionally controversial so those jurors can sell a book and... and uh, well, what what the interviews. court has said late on Saturday night, any attempt to identify jurors is a violation of the court order. So so far, we don't believe any law has been violated. We'll see whether or not that changes. Sure. Mark O'Mara held a press conference late on Saturday night. He went second. This is the winning case now um, as a defense attorney. The state went first as yes. attorneys who lost this case long before we even heard from Trayvon Martin's family and his parents who decided not to be in the courtroom when the verdict was announced. On the issue of race and media, this is what Mark O'Mara talked about on Saturday. If only those who decide to content, condemn Mr. Zimmerman as quickly and as viciously as they did would have taken just a little bit of time to find out who it was that they were condemning, it would never have happened. And it certainly wouldn't have happened if he was black because those people who decided that they were going to make him the scapegoat would not have. Sensitive, sensitive topic. Absolutely. How did he manage it, do you think? I think he did very well, and I think he makes a very valid point. I, I don't have zero problem. In fact, I think I would encourage, in a situation like this, for the investigators to look into racism as a motive. I mean, you can't ignore the fact that it's a young black male who's unarmed that is shot and killed by an older white male. If that doesn't pop into your mind, I wonder if racism is involved, then you are ignoring the reality of racism. However, once you do the investigation and you realize that there was overwhelming evidence that George Zimmerman was not a racist, then that, you have to move on from that theme. Okay, we've investigated, that wasn't a motive. The media really in many respects didn't seem to ever move on from that and in some ways actually encouraged it. As you know, one of the major networks edited the, the police call to make it sound like he was and racially profiled. Early on and oftentimes we forget about that because it happened more th than a year ago. What did you think of the state attorneys on, um, on Saturday night and their full-throated defense of their case? It was, it was I mean, they were very strong, and instead of coming out and saying the jurors have spoken, we need to respect the system, they went on and on and on. What was your view of their reaction? I, I was surprised. I really was. It was. Um, I, I've seen many uh, public speeches by, by prosecutors after they win or lose a case, and usually after they lose a case, all they say is, we disagree with the verdict respectfully, but we respect the jury's decision, and we ask everybody to maintain calm and to respect the but jury's decision. They, they no, dipped their toe in that, but they did not stay in no, that they, water. They, now, why they, did why did they talk the way they did, do you believe? You know, I, I don't know, but it, to me it seemed like they were defending their case all over again. There's been a lot of criticism, and I think rightfully so, about them bringing this case when they had to know they did not have enough evidence to prove it beyond every reasonable doubt. They have an ethical obligation to not bring a case when they know that, and clearly they knew that. And I think that they probably know that an investigation is going to be launched to look into this, or, or maybe they're trying to head one off. An investigation. To, to find out if there was political motivation that caused the bringing of this case. This was a tragic case that needed to be investigated full bore. 
But in many cases, prosecutors investigate and they realize we have a death and we have only one witness who's going to give their version and we don't have evidence to prove this beyond a reasonable doubt. And they have a difficult conversation with the family to say, I'm sorry, I wish we did, but we don't have the well, evidence. So, so you're saying there could be an investigation as to why they brought charges in the first place? I think so, and I'll tell you why I believe that could happen. Because there's, uh, there are the other pending allegations about hiding discovery. The, that's the motion, of, uh, the motion to contempt that was continued to the end of the case. There is some pretty interesting evidence that the uh, state attorney's office may have been hiding evidence from the defense. That's a huge ethical and, and uh, moral uh, obligation they have to abide by, and it appears they may have been, that, that could cause disbarment in some cases. So if that is happening, and you look at the other pieces of the way they investigated this case with Rachel Gintel and the playing of the audio tape in front of entire family members instead of one at a time, it, it, it's like screams of an agenda. And I think that they may be concerned. And so they stood there. I mean, they actually stood there and retried That's the case. In front of the, in front I understand of the, the point you're making. We'll see whether or not Eric Holder makes a move, too. That's something we'll watch out of Washington. Judge, issue. thank you. My pleasure, Bill. Judge Alex in the studio here. I want to go back to Martha now.